life in the fast lane just disappeared. There is a line in the course that says something like, can you imagine what it would be like to have no cares, no worries, no concerns, to merely be at peace all the time? As human beings, we're not too enamored with peace because nothing gets accomplished. And we're into accomplishing. And all of our accomplishing accomplishes nothing. Hmm. I'm just really fascinated by group meditation these days because group meditation does transformation of the planet so radically, so quickly. It's just, it's just phenomenal. I searched around the internet for group meditations and group um, prayers and that sort of thing related to 2012. And there are hundreds of sites, people everywhere organizing meditations for the healing of the planet, meditations for peace and that sort of thing. So you may say, well, I don't have a group here. Well, if you have access to a computer, you can have hundreds of groups that you can join. It's a shift so fast. I, it, it boggles my mind. I've been watching this for many, many years now. And I remember saying 20 and 30 years ago that in 40 years, people will be building houses without locks on their doors. And as time went by, I thought, oh boy, I really missed that one, didn't I? Hmm, There's no way that's gonna happen. And then I was watching some, uh, there was a, a YouTube video of a guy who had researched all the sites that were promoting world peace. And he started, he had his projector going and his screen and he was scrolling them by. And then they scrolled by a little faster and then a little faster. And he said, for me to, for you to see all of these, and they were going so fast you couldn't see them anymore. We would have to sit here for two weeks. He had found so many sites that were promoting world peace and promoting healing that sort of thing. And nobody cares what religion they're affiliated with or what philosophy they're affiliated with. Or it's just, let's go for peace. Let's go for love. Let's go for light. Hmm. So I'm, and I just, you know, that harmonic convergence experience that transformed such a huge part of our planet so quickly is, is just what we're going to be doing here for this next year. And it's, you know, I get, I get visions and I get, but you know, you know how credible those are, somebody who talks to his car, but you know, in the year 2032, the game is over. In the year 2032, there will be a remnant of what is today's army or military structure, but it's 100% dedicated to finding people who need help, who need food, you know, who need shelter. It's, um, Kennedy had the idea for the Peace Corps. This is, this is a real Peace Corps out there. And there are many power-hungry, greed-hungry people on our planet who are trying to increase control, in increase control of the military and the economic system and the political system and make slaves of the people and whatever. If you Google for conspiracy theories, you'll find so many, you know. And they just melt away at meditation. They can't survive in the face of group meditation 
of people holding peace in mind. This is a telepathic planet. You are a telepathic person. Every good idea you ever came to you came through your intuition, came to you through your mind being connected with infinite mind. I've just, every, every amazing experience that's happened in my life happened out of the blue. It happened unbeknownst to me, not planned by me, not created by me. It just was handed to me, just showed up. Must be a higher force at work here, higher power doing something. Our new world view has to give credence to all minds being one mind, to us all being in telepathic communication, all healing being a transference of love. We'll talk some about healing tomorrow. If thoughts create reality, which they do, no, they don't. Thoughts create the illusion that we live in. Thoughts create this audiovisual training program that we are experiencing. Reality itself is complete, fixed, can't be improved on. Reality is just God, it's just love. But in this illusion, thoughts create the image of reality. So if thoughts create reality, what do we want to think about? Where do we want our minds to be? What's worthwhile holding in mind? Now there's two sides to the picture. If you hold in mind peace, you get peace. Yeah. If you hold in mind ending war, you'll get war. You can't hold in mind what I'm against without creating more of what you're against. So we want to be in favor of peace and have no interest at all in war. We want to be in favor of wholeness. I just, you know, I'm, I'm well past having anything push my buttons, you understand that. But when I walk in the grocery store and that person hands me that cup and says, would you like to donate to breast cancer? I say, no, I'm not going to create breast cancer. Now, if you'd asked me if I wanted to donate to health, sure, to wholeness. But they have us thinking what we don't want instead of what we do want. We want to be our own authority figures. We want to be comfortable in believing what we believe, in trusting what we believe. Now, the Course says all correction belongs to Holy Spirit. So everybody has to make, uh, make friends with terms like Holy Spirit and God and all that, you know, logical people, intelligent people on this planet don't believe in God. And for good reason, you know. We say, there's God, God is love. Here's leukemia, here's war, here's poverty. Now wait a minute, you can't have both. Must not be any God. God wouldn't allow those things. Very logical. And it's very true. You know, you can't have both. God would not allow leukemia, war. But God allows you to go watch any motion picture that you want to watch, even if that motion picture indicates we have war. But God wouldn't allow it in reality. Okay. So if God is love and God is all-powerful, and we're going to define words. I've got a whole list of words we're going to define tomorrow. And you're going to drop the definitions that other people gave you and come up with your own. Be your own authority figure. Be your own interpreter of everything. But I say if God is love and God is all-powerful, there can be nothing but love. If there's anything other than love, then God is not love and not all-powerful. Seems to me like whatever's all-powerful can have it any way they want to have it. 
So God would have it all be love. So anything else is a misperception. Course says, course says, if you perceive an error, it is not the error that needs correcting. It is your perception. So every time something pushes our buttons or bothers us or whatever, then that's our lesson, is how can I see this the same way that a master teacher would see this? Ram Das was with his guru, named Karoli Baba, in India. And his ashram was just 50 miles from the Bangladesh border. And there was starvation and all sorts of evil stuff going on in Bangladesh. And Ram Das just got so upset. We have plenty of food here in the ashram, and I have a car. Why aren't we taking this to Bangladesh? And Neem Karoli Baba says, can't you see everything is all right just the way it is? Everything is all right just the way it is. It's all lessons. You went through your lessons. You went through your hard times in this life, your dark night of the soul experience, or many times, and you can see what it has done for you. It has brought you here to where you are the healer of the planet. It's given you understanding you could not have acquired in any other way, that everything is OK, just the way it is. <clears throat> Isn't it interesting that in the whole New Testament, Jesus never talks about anybody's behavior? No master teacher ever talks about behavior? Now, Moses did throw in, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which is the briefest, most concise statement of the law of karma. <clears throat> If you do unto others, as you would have them do unto you, your future is looking pretty good. You know, karma is for those that are completely oblivious to any other form of reality than what they believe they see with their eyes. The only way to work them out of that. They're not about to buy Thoughts create reality. That's just so impractical on this planet. Hard work creates reality. Bulldozers create reality. It's a patriarchal society. Big hammers creates reality. Hmm. There is no army, no tank, no artillery that can stand up to a prayer. Are we ready to make that shift? This is the shift. I keep referring to it as the shift. Recorded history only goes back so far, not very far. A few thousand years. Man's been on this planet a million years. What was happening before recorded history? <clears throat> the cycle of the ages. Same thing we're going through now. Every 26,000 years, a new Aquarian age shows up. Every single time it shows up, the choice is self-destruct or recreate the Garden of Eden. Atlantis really was out there. It really did self-destruct. They really did misuse power, ignore spirit, blow themselves to smithereens. No problem. They're all back. They're trying it again. You're trying it again. Yeah. This time we make it. Earth is a school. Earth has a school board. Earth is planned. There is 
a guiding committee for this system. Nothing happens by accident. We think the entirety of reality is from when I can remember when I was age three until I die at whatever. Okay? Sorry. You've done that 10,000 times. <clears throat> this cycle has come around and around and around and around. We talk about the wheel of karma. You do it to them, they do it to you. You do it to them, they do it to you. You blow them away, they blow you away. Over and over and over. But it's not a wheel. It's a spiral. Each time you go around, you come back a little bit smarter. A little bit smarter. And then you decide, this little bit stuff is ridiculous. Somewhere you get an, an, an awakening. Somewhere you get an insight that says there has to be a better way than fighting my way through life. Than subjecting myself to tragedy and disappointment and struggle and weakness. Has to be a better way. And that's when your spiritual search starts. Some people literally have done a million lifetimes. And gosh, don't believe you know anything about that. There is no time. How are you going to have reincarnation? Time is not linear. Or you can do 12 lives at the same time. You can do all your future lives before your past lives. We don't know anything. We really want to get that. We don't know anything. Okay. But at some point in the good story that we're making up here, you had come to the place where you could say, I'm going to become a seeker. I'm going to start reading and studying. If I can find somebody who's happy, I'm going to go sit at their feet and have them teach me to be happy. So we did a million lifetimes all looking very much the same, a million deaths. And we think death is tragedy. Well, apparently, it's certainly not permanent. We come back and do it again, 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 right? And then after we say, I will become a seeker, instead of a million lives, it says you can do all the rest of it in 10 lives, two lives. The Course says, you have spent eons learning to be confused. It takes but a moment to remember who you are. So we want to work ourselves back to that moment, and we want to do it in this lifetime. We want to do it now. When I first opened the Course in Miracles, finally opened the Course in Miracles, I went to the last page of the last book. I didn't want to read 1,100 pages. I wanted the answer. Every novel or mystery, you go to the last page, you find out who done it, right? You guys know what the last page says, right? This is the beginning. Hmm, whoops. Oh, well. So we want to acknowledge the tools that we have. We want to acknowledge where we are on our path. We want to understand about the path. We want to know there is a path. I'm on the path. I haven't made a single mistake. Because something hurts, we think we blew it. No, because something hurts because we chose wisely. I want to go through this experience so I can become a healer for planet Earth. And we immediately find out. It's really interesting to talk to people who have left their body. It really is. First of all, they lose interest in planet Earth. Everything that we think was so valuable here. Oh, gosh, I, did I leave enough insurance money for my family? Did I? Oh, God. 
That's a motion picture. Who cares? The lights will come on. You'll walk outside and be in the sunlight and say, eh, that's a pretty good movie. And that's all the significance a lifetime has for you when you get out of here. Okay. You never, ever lose your connection with your loved ones. But to your loved ones that are still in body, you appear to be an extremely wise being. We'll do a little exercise tomorrow, a little guided meditation where we commune with our guides, our spirit guides, and stuff like that. I was doing that one time, and I, uh, people who had, some people had never met their guides, were unaware who they were or whatever, and they don't care, it doesn't matter to them, but uh, this woman met her, her guide, and when the exercise was over, she was all agitated. You know, I said, what was your experience? My guide was my mother. <laughs> I don't want my mother as my guide. My mother wasn't a nice person. <laughs> so we investigated how people change when they die. You know, they have no agendas after they die. They have no control issues after they die. They're not trying to make your life miserable. The first thing they see is, oh, that was a training class. I get it. I understand why I did everything I did. I understand why everybody else did everything they did. I get it now. But you know, they, they, they move from third dimension to fourth or fifth or sixth dimensional beings. And what does that mean? They're outside of time. They can see all the past, present, and future in the same moment. Wouldn't you like to have a spirit guide that could see tomorrow and warn you when you're about to step in a hole and say, no, you don't want to go over here. You don't want to go over there. As human beings, what right do we have to make a single decision about our life? Can you imagine making decisions about your life when you can't even see tomorrow? That's really dumb. I'm going to make a decision that's going to affect my tomorrow and I can't even see tomorrow? Whoa, height the stupidity. Make no decision about your life alone. Make every decision about your life by accepting input from the other side. There's no rule against that. That's not cheating. We believe we have to do everything the hard way for it to have any value. And the Course says, do it the easy way. You don't even have to be enlightened. You can immediately move into the happy dream. Still a dream, still an illusion, not real. But you can enjoy every moment of it from here on out. You can learn lessons without pain. Oh, there's an exciting concept. Everything I've ever learned before was because they were saying, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> what if I just say, uh, help me? Now, with all due respect, to everybody who's read any religious or philosophical history or, or uh, philosophy or path, and they've said this is the way to do it, that's the way to do it. I, me, I was told what the most powerful prayer in the world is. I hold that knowledge. You're probably jealous. <laughs> Okay, I'll share. <laughs> Some of you have heard this before, but I was told that the most powerful prayer, I was told specifically, more powerful than the Lord's Prayer, much older than the Lord's Prayer, more powerful than any sacred ritual, the most powerful prayer in the world is a single word. Help! 
<laughs> that mobilizes all the forces in the spirit world to come to your rescue. That's all they need. They need your permission. You have free will. Nobody can help you if you don't ask. But when you say help, you have given control of your life to the spirit world. Oh, you'll try to take it back within 10 minutes. You know, oh, I better do this. Now, wait a minute, how'd you make that decision? Did you do that by yourself? Oh yeah, I forgot. It's a habit, don't make any decision by yourself. Zero decisions by yourself. No decision is yours to make unless you're really, really dumb. My mother died many years ago, is a very wise woman now because she can see tomorrow and she will tell me, step around that, thank you. Very nice, very nice. Hmm. There is no good and bad, no right and wrong. We will define heaven and hell tomorrow. That'll be words on our list so that we use our own vocabulary instead of the vocabulary we were taught when we were growing up. There is no up and down, left and right. There is no duality. Don't we often say there's only oneness? That means there's no duality means there's no up and down. Up and down are the same. Left and right are the same. Good and bad are the same. True and false are the same. Nothing, nothing that we have thought was real on this planet is real. Nothing in life is as we thought it was. Absolutely nothing. Why, when you have seven billion people on a planet, all studying books, getting educations, studying philosophies, whatever, we turn out one master teacher every millennium. Why? Does that mean what we're being educated with is not taking us to peace, not taking us to happiness, not taking us to heaven? Absolutely does. What we've been learning is the problem, not the solution. We've been functioning as if we're all separate. Let's negotiate. How can oneness negotiate with oneness? I'll blow you away because you don't agree with me. I'm right and you're wrong. But there's no you and me. There is nothing, there has never been anything in your life outside of your mind except a mirror. Everything you thought was out there, everything you blamed, everything you criticized, everything you judged, was you. That's the ultimate karmic lesson. That's instant karma when you get that one. Why did I judge that person as doing it wrong? Because I didn't want to find out who they were because I knew somebody with that color hair before and they weren't a nice person, so this must not be a nice person. The Course says, I see only the past. All I can see is the past, and not the real past, but the past as I perceived it is all that I've ever seen. Are we willing to make this shift in our own consciousness so that we can create this shift on the planet? In the next 20 years, now it's, it's literally true, if you go way back in history, one master teacher coming out of the, rising out of the ashes every millennium or so, we count them. We look back and say, there was Buddha. Yeah. There was a Jesus. 
in the next 20 years. We already have 10,000 10, on the planet at this moment. 10,000. That's more than we created in the entire history of the planet. We have 10,000 awakened, enlightened beings on this planet at this moment. And don't go look for them. They don't have blog sites, and they don't make YouTube videos. And they're just hanging out there, infusing the planet with their telepathic energy. But in the next 20 years, before 2032, we will have several million enlightened Jesus Christ, Gautama Buddha types on this planet. That's not weird or strange. It happens every 26,000 years we come into an Aquarian age. And if we don't blow ourselves up, then we become Garden of Eden. And I believe Garden of Eden was described as the time when gods and goddesses walked on this planet. Grasp how powerful the times are right now. Grasp the shift that's going on. This is not life as usual on planet Earth. We need a new worldview. We need a new paradigm. We need a new whatever you want to call it that says, God is. That's all you need to know. God is. Okay. Now, we're going to stay immersed in this God energy this evening, tomorrow morning, tomorrow at the workshop. We want to think in terms that makes it more real to us and less of a fantasy, some biblical nonsense or whatever. It's got to become real. Okay. You do want to walk around and simply because somebody came up and touched the hem of your robe, they walked away cancer-free. You do want to be that way. It is your assignment. But you can't criticize something and be a healer. You can't find errors on the planet and be a healer. If you say errors are real, then you have to say disease is real. Errors are not real. Disease is not real. Your thought, holding in mind your favorite in image of love or divinity, whatever that might be, a master teacher, a flower, whatever, it's all the same. You hold that in mind while you hug somebody. And they'll be telling their friends, strangest things happened yesterday. I had this wrong with me and that wrong with me and that didn't work and, and today I'm perfect. You're not special. You're normal in a cosmic sense, but that is what you are here to do. So we will finish the healing on ourselves as we go through the weekend, offer our healing to the planet, offer it to all of our loved ones, and watch the miracles unfold. I believe the Course says, miracles are natural. When miracles do not occur, something has gone wrong. There's only one thing that can go wrong, and that is our perceiving error. If we perceive no error, no problem, It's not always a 
pretty picture. There was a, a true story called the Denver Messiah about this fellow that healed everybody he touched. And the word got out. <laughs> had thousands of people around the block trying to get in to see him. We might want to find a comfortable way of healing everybody instead of being swarmed under by the crowd, but that's all right. All right, let's just take a minute and let's speak with our guidance, get on better terms with our guidance, and invite them to stay with us every moment of every day. Invite them to run our life completely. Okay? So let's just take a deep breath. You have inner senses as well as outer senses. You have sight, smell, taste, feel, hearing. All of those work on the inner level also. So begin to hone your inner senses. They're more reliable than your outer senses. Imagine a flower. What's your favorite kind of flower? Create a flower. Hold this flower in front of you. Examine it very closely. See what its color is. Is it a uniform color or does it have different shades in it? Your inner sense of vision is very strong, very good, very keen. Rotate your flower, look into the center of your flower. What do you see? Look at the stem. You have an inner sense of touch. Touch the petals of your flower. Describe to yourself what they feel like. Touch the stem of your flower. Describe to yourself what it feels like. You have an inner sense of smell. Smell your flower. Have you smelled anything like this before? Everything in existence has intelligence. Why does the flower turn into the flower that it is? Why did it not turn into a tree? What is the intelligence in this flower? Your flower has much knowledge, much understanding. It has its own purpose for being, which is different than animals, people, birds. Ask your flower now, what is your purpose in being? And recognize how you receive information, whether you hear words or see symbols or get a telepathic message or sense the answer. You'll get the answer in your own way. Ask your flower, what is your purpose for being?
ask your flower to tell you something that is meaningful to you. Give thanks to your flower for sharing with you, for helping you. While you have been looking at your flower, many, many individuals have come to your side, are standing around you. They may have the form of a human being. They may be in the form of a light, an orb. Any form is possible. Use your senses, use your inner senses of feel, emotion, knowledge, and feel the love that they radiate to you. Feel the connection. Ask the group if they ever leave you alone. Be aware of how you receive information through feeling or sound or sight or knowing. Tell this group what you would like to do with the rest of your life. Ask them if they will help you. While you have free will, you can do with your life whatever you want to. Let them know you would like to consult with them on every future decision that you make. Ask them if they will give you one piece of information that will be very useful for you this day, this week, with what is going on in your life.
Feel their embrace. Feel their oneness with you. God and I are one. I am that I am. And all is well. That's the way it really is. Amen. She mm. made Christmas. <laughs> If you could see yourself the way I see you right now, you would never, ever worry about another thing as long as you live. There is not one task that you and God together can't accomplish quite easily. Hmm. Cool. Thank you.